Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. Today, I have two amazing ladies with me. I have, of course, Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita, as you know, is a psychosexual therapist and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. But along with her, we also have the fabulous Dr. Tanya Narendra, who you all know better as Dr. Cuterus. And I love that name because I guess you're cute and you have a uterus. So Tanya, that makes you Dr. Cuterus. But um, <laughs> aside from being a brand new bride, Tanea is also studying to be a gynecologist. She's a sex educator and the perfect person to talk about vaginas, which is our subject today. Welcome, both of you. Thank you very much. That was a lovely introduction. The perfect person to talk about vaginas. I will have that written on my tombstone. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I have to say that Anvita specially asked for you to do this particular episode because she felt oh. that um, we get so many questions about vaginas, as Anvita will tell you in a second. And um, we wanted somebody there who could answer the little nitty gritty, not just the relational side of things. Absolutely. I think, you know, vaginas are such an unspoken thing. I just did a training the other day. And the question I asked is, how is your vagina feeling? You know, and that is a question we don't ask. And that's a question that we don't talk about at all. Uh, and as we talk about vaginas today, to the ladies out there, how is your vagina feeling today? And that's what we're going to explore. I think that's amazing. So I'm going to launch right into the questions. Um, as you probably know, Tanea, because you deal with the same questions day in and day out, we get hundreds of these questions from women who un they, they don't have anywhere to turn to to ask these questions. And some of them sound so basic, but I guess if you don't know where to go to, to, have, um, to get an answer, then you're just floundering. So I'm gonna actually begin with this, the one that comes in the most, which is all about the insecurities around the vaginal area. We all know that there are certain parts of the body which automatically come with pigmentation, there's pubic hair, um, there's, um, you know, there, there are sort of scars, ingrown hairs, there's all sorts of things, pimples that happen in that general area. They don't look like they do in pornographical films. You know, they're not this bright, shining, gorgeous, and they are on the inside, but, uh, you know, not necessarily in their appearance. And a lot of people have so many insecurities around this and I'd like you to address this because you know you have very young girls writing in and saying I've got dark patches on the ups, um, upper part of my thighs on the inside of my thighs I daren't ask my mom because she'll be angry if I even go to her with this question and then women as they get slightly older they're in relationships and are still feeling conscious of this um, and I, I guess the, the, the real point to the question is how do we address this so that they can get over their insecurities about it? Um, so I think that is a very pertinent question because even I get this a lot in my daily practice at the hospital, in my DMs, on emails especially. Um, and it's not just the fact that they're insecure about it, it's also that they're shamed for it a lot. You know, I think a lot of men enter sexual relationships expecting very porn like genitalia and to be very honest it's not their fault either because this is what they've been shown is you know normal but um you know everything that we see in porn has a lot of bleaching waxing sometimes even cgi a lot of editing a lot of color correction going into it um which obviously is not what real genitals look like so i think the first thing that i absolutely do want to address with this question is we don't even call our bits the right names. You know, it's called the vaginal area. And the fun thing about it is that the vagina is not the part on the outside. It's the part on the inside. It's like, so how I like to explain it was with the nose, you know, the, the canal on the inside, like your nasal canal, that's kind of like your vagina. And the stuff you see on the outside, all of this is your vulva. So 
the actual outside part of our genitals the stuff we see the stuff that touches our clothes it's called the vulva and it's normal to have darkness on the vulva and the area surrounding the vulva which would be the inner thighs like you mentioned um it would be the perineum which is a little bit further back all the way around the butthole now i don't know if somebody would go in front of a mirror and look at their butthole but if they do <laughs> they will notice that it is darker than the surrounding areas and this is a very normal thing in our bodies um areas that have folds they tend to be darker so even if you flex your elbow and you see there'll be a little bit of darkness compared to the surrounding skin in your elbow um people who have belly rolls they will see there's a little bit of more pigmentation in the rolls itself um and these are very normal bodily things the reason why it happens is because this pigmentation is a sign of maturity you know you're trying to infantilize yourself if you want to get rid of that um hormones step in at puberty hormones cause pigmentation and this pigmentation also increases when you're pregnant so it's a sign of your body growing it's something that actually should be celebrated it's you know how in a lot of cultures when you know a girl gets her first period she's celebrated because that's the mark of her womanhood and you know when a boy gets his beard it's celebrated because that's a sign of his manhood and on the contrary here we sort of trying to hide this away so there's nothing wrong with it and you need to f- like people need to be very careful about not falling prey to these ads and these scammy lightening creams and these lightening serums and these um beauty procedures that claim to lighten and whiten your genitals i know a patient of mine who used this very strong lightening agent that is normally given to people who have melasma now melasma is something that happens when in pregnancy some people get patches of dark uh, darkness on their face um under doctor supervision we do give them certain chemicals if they want to get rid of that one particular dark patch now she used this on her genitals and her inner thighs and she came in with chemical burns because it was obviously too strong for <laughs> you know for going on genital skin so a lot of people will look at youtube and i don't know put lemon juice down their thighs and on their vulva which of course can cause irritation and vaginal infections as well it messes with your ph there's a bunch of things that can happen so there's two steps to sort of countering this insecurity the first is understanding that pigmentation in your genitals is perfectly normal it's a natural thing and it's a sign of maturity it's not something that you need to hide from and the second thing is that i understand that you know loving your body is a journey you're a work in progress always but let's not put things that don't belong over there over there <laughs> I just want to uh, sorry I'm with I know that you're coming in with a question I can see it on your face but I just want to put in a little <laughs> something over here a couple of years ago I remember Dr Watson do you remember the very elderly gentleman Dr Watson who used to do the sex column in Mumbai um I remember him saying this some some guy had written into him and said um that should he put nimbu juice on his wife's um, uh vulvic area the you know the, the outer labia etc um and dr watson had written back and said tum bhel puri nahi bana rahe ho that was such a good answer <laughs> so, i hope that everybody must know that remembers it <laughs> yeah, I, i love that bhel puri nahi bana rahe ho it's sorry i'm with you we're coming on this now <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i was just saying that you know uh, this idea once again that there is a perfect kind of vagina you know whenever we're trying to fix something we believe there is an ideal to be reached or matched or you know and it in it, it is really important to know that there isn't one vagina that looks perfect this is a myth it doesn't exist every vagina is different um i've spoken about this before but there is something called the great wall of vaginas where you can actually there are casts of different vaginas and it's put into a picture you can just google it the great wall of vagina and the idea was to show that vaginas come in different shape color sizes 
Uh, every looks different, every, you know, just as breasts, because we say that about breasts as well. People think there is an ideal looking breast. Similar to breasts and vagina, there is no perfect shape or there is no perfect kind. I know people tend to believe that, but more so for vaginas. Um, and once again, that idea is sold by porn that there is a certain vagina that's an ideal for a vagina, but that is not true. So I think this pull that I need to make it look like something, we need to you know, really work on that because what are we making it look like? Uh, we and that can actually harm us when we try and alter thing, change thing. Like you said, it can lead to a burn, it can lead to a cut, it can lead to problems. So, I think that mindset may, needs to change. Yeah, I think that um, it'd be lovely to have an answer. I can't think of something that I could say to these young girls to say, "Look, uh, this will take away your insecurities. This will give you back your self-esteem around it." We can just reiterate over and over again that everybody's vulva looks slightly different and it it does of necessity. It, it's like literally of nature, it comes with different kinds of pigmentation and marks and so on. Um, and there, there are more permutations and combinations to how it looks than you would even imagine. So whatever you have is truly perfect. So just go with it. You trust me when I say that if there was actually something that matter with it, you would not be simply worrying about the looks. You wouldn't be worrying about a lot more. You're perfect. Yeah. And how many of uh, us compare vaginas? Like, I think it's the most weird, <laughs> like, I, yeah. So anyway. I mean, I see at least 30, 35 vulvas every day and I can guarantee you no two vulvas look the same. They all look different in their own sweet ways. And they, they kind of like faces, you know. Vulvas have a personality just like faces have a personality. Somebody has a longer nose. Somebody has longer inner lips. It's, it's sort of like that. And I always say that if you're going to be that uh, worried about how it looks, go with dimmer lighting. Turn the lights <laughs> off. Let the moonlight come in. You know, go with that till you become comfortable with your sexuality because once you get into the understanding that pleasure is what it's about you won't think about this anymore so yeah go with dimmer lighting rather than um all these strong chemical creams so um Anita, am i asking the next question or are you well, I think I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to get some basic questions in and then we can get into some more complex ones. Because I think women, uh, we have spoken about this, very rarely do women look into the mirror to look how their vagina looks like, right? And I think it's really important and I will ask more questions from Tanaya, but uh, because you need a baseline. You need to see what color it is. What does it look? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? Because a lot of times the question that troubles people and they have nowhere to go and ask is, it's smelling, it's itchy, it's dry. Um, there is a, There are cuts. It seems like it's bleeding, but it's not period bleeding. What's happening? Why is it so dry? So we get a lot around the vagina uh, which can be related to the skin, but also vulva. We should be using this right. So there's a lot that we hear about the vulva, uh, which can be problematic, or the vagina. So I think just if you can give the women out there some information of what does a healthy vagina feel like and what are the signs to look out for when you know things might be off and how do they find that out? Um, we actually have two very curious insights into our health that men lack. The first is vaginal discharge and the second is periods. Now, it gives you, it's sort of like a monthly doctor's report. Okay, this is what's happening in your body. So I think that's, that's a very, uh, we, we're very privileged to have these um, health insights. Now, talking about discharge, I know there's a lot of scammy ads out there that claim to cure white discharge white discharge ko se neft kare and all of that that's all crap you don't need to fall for that discharge is a very normal and natural thing it's it's is the way your vagina keeps itself clean um it happens every day some people find it less some people find it more um it ranges in colors 
so it ranges anywhere from a colorless to a whitish discharge sometimes it can be like a pale grayish almost um how i like to describe it is it kind of looks either like malai or either like egg white these are the sort of two variations you are more more likely to encounter um anything different from this is an is usually a red flag for example now i'm going to be using some food metaphors so i'm sorry for grossing all of you out but if it looks like dahi that's um which is a uh, yogurt so that's occurred you want to be a little bit more confer- uh, you, you want to be a little bit more careful because that can be a sign of fungal infection now with discharge any discharge regularly is fine as long as it doesn't come with any other symptoms the symptoms being smell if it has you know our discharge and our vulvas and our vaginas have their own distinct smell most people t- tend to describe it like a metallic smell but if it smells obviously different then you want to go see your doctor if this comes with a different discharge as well obviously you want to see your doctor um so color of your discharge if there is a sudden change in the amount of discharge you're getting like you've been having a decent amount and suddenly it just dries up completely or you've had okay some amount of discharge and suddenly you're just like gushing that would be a sign to see your doctor and if that's happening you know repeatedly not not a one time sexual encounter um so smell look amount color i mentioned sort of the range if it looks green you definitely want to run to your doctor if it looks yellow and i don't mean yellow on your panties because when it's exposed to air it tends to become yellow but if it looks yellow when it's coming out of you you want to see your doctor it can be pinkish or red tinged or brown um that's usually a sign of either old blood blood or very little blood coming out of you but anything different from what you're used to you want to see your doctor um in terms of smells a fishy smell what is described as or an ammonia like smell now a lot of people haven't smelled ammonia <laughs> but a lot of people have smelled stinky fish and if it ever smells like that that can be a sign of an upset ph balance so you want to see your doctor for that uh sorry am i back yeah okay um yeah so if it's a fishy smell you want to see your doctor for that if it smells different from what you're used to if it smells especially foul you want to see your doctor and the other big thing is itching and burning if you're getting any of these symptoms you go to your doctor everything else just let it be it's fine there's no big deal another thing that tends to be missed out and that's very important for older people is if you're getting white um the texture of your skin is changing and it's becoming like white patches that can be a sign of an early cancer as well so you definitely want to see your doctor if you're feeling like leathery skin that is whitish and the 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 texture of your vulva is looking different and it's distinctly feeling different then you want to see your doctor but largely like we all mentioned there's so many varieties generally sab theek hai kuch garbad lage see your doctor and the the patches of white that you're talking about they look different from the eczema because sometimes women feel like there's extreme dryness in the vulva in especially in the exterior lips uh and what do you just put regular like coconut oil or cream or what do you do when the vagina feels dry in the exterior uh, the vulva feels uh, feels dry So usually what i recommend for feeling a lot of dryness is a light moisturizer like cetaphil has a very nice fragrance free moisturizer another thing that can be good is petroleum jelly i don't generally recommend coconut oil for people because coconut oil is known to clog pores so you can get blackheads which can get infected and you can get boils and stuff if it works for you and it's been working fine for you sure do it but if it's a new thing i'd avoid it uh, since you did mention eczema eczema is something that happens for a lot of people in their vulval area especially in the skin folds so you know the folds of your thighs you can have extreme dryness that's also something to watch out for and if you have eczema generally you can speak to your doctor about it they can give you particular emollients that can help keep that moist thank you and that you know and i, and I just want to say that I'm sure so many people sitting out there must be thinking oh my god I've always wondered about this because I think there's so much about the vagina that we want to know and um and it's one of those things you know you pick up the phone and you call 
your mother or your sister or your friend and you say mere hat you know something's happened to my hand see it's very dry <laughs> but very rarely do you pick up the phone and say oh you know my vulva is like feeling very dry like what do i do or it's smelling <laughs> foul and um and and you know so a lot of examples that you gave are to do with thrush like commonly known as thrush um as a infection and that is basically and you can correct me is when the ph level of the vagina goes off and that literally could be because you were having antibiotics the antibiotics can just you know change the ph level and there are multiple reasons for that uh, but everything that you spoke about is uh, sometimes a good indicator that there might be you know a bacterial infection there might be thrush that is happening is that correct um so thrush specifically refers to a fungal infection but everything that you okay. said is absolutely correct um long term antibiotic use can increase your chances of getting a fungal infection recently in india we had a lot of scare of black fungus and white fungus which is essentially that in, in covid people were indiscriminately being prescribed antibiotics which was leading to essentially we have a colony of good bacteria that live in our body and they tend to they're, they're sort of our army and they fight off everything that's not supposed to invade now antibiotics they kill all kinds of bacteria good bad everything so when the good bacteria also die out things that normally should not grow in our bodies for example fungus that starts growing another reason why that might happen is um diabetes or certain medications can do it if you have a very high blood sugar also particularly in india we have a very hot moist environment and fungus likes to grow in moist and dark places which you know the groin is the perfect sort of party hangout for fungus <laughs> so um thrush precisely would be that and that's when you have a cottage cheese a cottage cheese or curd like discharge um but yeah absolutely anything that messes with your ph can cause an infection it can be a bacterial infection like bacterial vaginosis it could be a fungal infection it could increase your risk of getting an sti so there's a whole variety of things yeah and so, so um the only and seema you can ask the next question the only tip i was going to give is that if you do feel any of those symptoms and you do have thrush try not having sex especially without a condom because you can pass it to your partner and then it's really difficult to get rid of because you keep giving it back and forth like you might get treated then you might give it to your partner then your partner might have it and the partner might give it so even one it might hurt little bit if because the dryness the lubrication goes of the vagina but otherwise uh, try using a condom while having sex so that you know it people think that it's not an sti because it doesn't come in like it's it's like different category because it's an infection uh, fungal infection but you can pass it and so just try using a condom while having sex and the stage is for you seema for the next question no i was actually going to follow up with this thing and just make a point of saying we mentioned odors and as you know that there are a lot of products out there people sort of saying this is a do you wash the inside of yourself with it and that's really really bad for you isn't it so Absolutely. if you just want to address that quickly before we um so a lot of times these douches are sold with the idea of cleansing your odors historically they were sold as a contraceptive device you know that if you after you have sex you just wash yourself from the inside and all the sperm will go out did not work by the way um but um what it does is that all of the natural moisture that's inside your vagina a is gone the discharge that's supposed to keep you clean is also gone and lastly it's you know all of the good bacteria that's like building its nice little parties in the corners you're flushing it all away so you you're creating a perfect ground for um infections now douching was so much like so popular in fact that listerine the mouthwash and lysol the table household cleaner they were originally meant to be vaginal douches and people used to have awful chemical burns they were meant to be vaginal douches for contraception for getting rid of odors um and you know all of these sort of euphemisms for uh, implying that the vagina is somehow unhealthy or dirty or unclean it is a very patriarchal notion that 
let's not get into right now <laughs> but um yeah it's it's a very quick way of destroying all of your good bacteria of destroying all of the natural moisture it's it's the equivalent of taking a dish scrubbing sponge and oh no a foot scrubber and scrubbing your face with it you know it's not going to do you any good yeah um you know the karma sutra is very big about hygiene down there for the uh, genitalia but for both men and women so it talks about how you need to wash the outside area keep it free of perspiration keep it you know and i think it's absolutely wonderful and it definitely says that you should be i mean it it says that the smell that you have on the inside depends on what you've eaten and that makes sense because i mean your perspiration will smell uh, smell of what you've eaten so um it, it, you know especially for men it says that um their semen will start to taste different if they um don't have alcohol for instance so you know and, and there was this one point where i remember i did this little talk where i said to uh, the, the, the that you know if the guys want a blow job then they should actually maybe go off the alcohol for a little while and that might encourage their partner to you know go down on them but anyway we're talking about vaginas we're not talking about penises today so to come back <laughs> to the next question the one that comes in in very large numbers is about the size now um most women are worried that the vagina is going to be the vagina is going to be too large and too loose to give any pleasure to the man there are a few that come in saying that they're too small and it's going to be so they're worried either about the pain or whether there won't be any pleasure or the man won't want to come in etc but let's actually deal with the fact that they think that it might be too big and this is people who've not had children so this is pre childbirth it's just this worry I, I, and for some reason there seems to be like this big sort of thing around it you know with the men talking about how my wife's vagina is too big and too loose so sorry tell talk to us about that um the vagina is an elastic organ so why do i do agree that certain people are constitutionally smaller and certain people are constitutionally larger the vagina is like a balloon you know if you blow up a balloon it expands and when you let air out of it it goes back to the same size it's exactly what it is the tissue is elastic um i have a small model here that doesn't quite exactly show everything but so this is the uterus and the canal leading out of the vagina now i don't know how much you can see on this but there's like mm-hmm. sort of ridges on the inside mm-hmm. what these ridges are doing uh, is that they're meant to show that the vagina has all of these convolutions on the inside now i'm going to explain it using a piece of paper so excuse me for one second but essentially the point behind having these ridges is to increase the amount of tissue that's there for example if you think about our brain there's a, not a very large space inside our head to hold the brain but we hold a lot of brain tissue inside and that's why the brain looks like the way it does it has all of these ridges inside what this does is that instead of you know occupying this much space this much of piece of paper occupying this much space if you put it in folds it occupies less space but there's a lot of tissue here now instead of just putting this piece of paper here if i do this i can probably accommodate three more pieces of paper here um a good way of explaining it is that it looks like an accordion uh the accordion has all of these folds and it has all of these sort of convolutions and ridges and that's exactly what our vagina is like the vagina is like the brain in that regard that the more um the more folds you have the more it can expand just the same way as you would fold a sari and keep it inside you know it occupies less space but when you open it you realize it's 9 meters 9 meters 6 meters how long is the sari well some of them are 9 meters it's okay but i was actually thinking i thought you were just going to make a fan out of that piece of paper yeah. and that is what i, I was, was doing thinking. exactly that you see that <laughs> 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 so you know in this tiny space you've actually got this whole piece of paper and when aroused the vagina expands just like this and this is really important because remember you deliver a baby out of there and your cervix has to dilate a whole 10 cm 10 cm is a chotu wali scale we used to get in our uh, geometry box 
your your cervix has to dilate that much to deliver a baby so of course the vagina has to dilate a lot it's it's like an elastic sock so this whole thing about the vagina becoming loose is not a thing you know you can't it's an elastic organ you can't loosen it now there are two things that do affect the elasticity which is childbirth and age so it does go down with the years but um and with more and more childbirths because there's a lot more muscle tissue that's destroyed um but largely yeah no the vagina the vagina doesn't become you know like dhila it's not like a it's not like a purana moza that's become dhila now and um when people do talk about being smaller or tighter now once again i do agree that there's certain people that are constitutionally smaller but again it's an elastic organ so it's going to expand so the best thing to do for making sex wonderful comfortable enjoyable for all parties involved is to focus on foreplay the minute you focus on foreplay your brain it takes a little bit of time there's like a bit of a traffic jam between you know sending the signals from your brain to your vagina तो वो थोड़ा ट्रैफिक जैम को टाइम दे दो वो सिग्नल यहाँ से यहाँ पहुंच जाएगा तो वेजाइना विल रियलाइज ओके फोल समथिंग अबाउट टू एंटर मी आई नीड टू ओपन माय ग्राज डोर एंड इट जस्ट रिलैक्सेस सो यू वांट द वेजाइना रिलैक्स्ड फॉर कंफर्टेबल सेफ हेल्दी सेक्स सम पीपल क्लेम दैट यू नो इफ इट्स रियली टाइट एंड इफ इट्स नॉट लुब्रिकेटेड इट्स मोर फन बट आई हार्डली थिंक सो यू नो इफ योर पार्टनर इज गोट बी इन पेन इफ दे रियली नॉट रिलैक्सड they're going to get more injuries they're going to get more scrapes and cuts they are not really going to enjoy it because there's not enough lubrication but again if they relax there will be lubrication the vagina will be allowing things to enter and that makes sex wonderful and great and all that it's supposed to be so small focus on more foreplay i'm sorry my google is acting up <laughs> so small focus on more for play and loose it's not loose it goes back to the same size i actually wanted to ask you i feel like this question of tightness i feel also comes from these myths around and these moral ideas around virginity and i think it becomes very problematic a lot of times with young women uh being you know in Uh, landing up being abused because the men have this idea that because you're a virgin you're going to be tighter and then that's what it is and then women carry that in some ways you know when they have been in a sexual relationship for some time they really worry saying oh am i tight enough for my partner but these are myths you know perpetuated and sold over years and years uh, but actually it's not true so i just want to like make a kind of a headlines and if you can reiterate that it is a myth and not true i also want to point um, out over here that we've said this very often but you know uh, this is what the positions in the kama sutra are created for that if you felt that you were too big then you know this was the ideal way to keep your legs etc to tighten yourself up and if you were too small then you would practice certain other positions to open it up a little bit more so they were thinking about it way back then as well and saying it's okay nothing is wrong with you this your body is made in a certain way you learn to work around it but yes like anvita said just reiterate that one more time please just say it in so many words that it doesn't lose the now <laughs> just because you've had sex so many times um yeah the vagina does not become loose from having a lot of sex because if that were the case you know if if the vaginas were such a crushing force would penises get smaller the more sex you had i mean if 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 it goes that way the penis should shrink the more and more you have sex but you know for some reason having more sex for men is a badge of honor for having more sex for women is something to be ashamed of and that's one of the ways we've learned to control women's bodies and sexuality anyway that's a whole other cluster fuck but um yeah the vagina does not become loose from having too much sex the only thing that can affect the elasticity of the vagina is age and multiple traumatic childbirths and also i think that there are a lot of men who are possibly very small their organs are very small in which case like i said you do have the help of the kama sutra to understand what kind of positions to make love in you know so don't take it upon yourself there is the way forward 
and that sort and of toxic ideals of sorry no 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 go the, ahead go ahead the toxic ideals of beauty go both ways because men are also fed this absolute lie about how big they should be because most men are not the size and that's perfectly normal you know nobody wants to carry around a giant snake in their pants so um it you know it sorry back in the back in the day in one of the santhal um, stories you know the santhal the santhal tribe from sort of between bengal and bangladesh they believed that in times gone by a man's penis used to be 12 cubits long a cubit is from here to here basically from your elbow so it is and they used to wear it wrapped around their waist and carry it around and then there's this whole story about how it's shortened to this because they get punished um yeah oh, but Lord. <laughs> it's a Actually, really funny story me- that's for another time we have to talk about the story <laughs> another time <laughs> to be very honest though medically that might make sense because there's a lot of penile tissue you can pull out if you want to do a penis reconstruction surgery there's a lot of stuff inside that you can pull out and make more penis out of <laughs> really well wow, that's amazing so it could have maybe in the past been 12 cubits long i don't think so <laughs> that that would make um, yeah that would make humanity very difficult <laughs> the existence of humanity very difficult <laughs> imagine walking okay, with a wheelbarrow in front of your yeah. crotch <laughs> but talking about reconstruction i feel like i'm the party popper in this podcast like you're talking about stories and well and i'm like i'm going to spoil the party um and bring in there are surgeries today around vaginal reconstruction and hymen reconstruction and there is a big conversation about actually the law changing in uk where they're going to make hymen reconstruction illegal now because um as in, and that's coming in the newspapers because more and more apparently and i and i hope i'm not giving ideas to people but people are asking for virginity certificates and and the certificate comes from a doctor who basically examines which is obviously really you know you cannot do that to a woman you cannot impose i think the word we're looking for is fucked up <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and but the law is coming out in uk where they are going to say that hymen like hymen certificates these virginity certificates and reconstruction is going to be considered illegal uh in uk and they are working towards presenting it in parliament but just you know what would you like to say to women or people there who are considering vaginal reconstruction surgery cosmetic surgery or hymen reconstruction what would you say to them um so i actually have two personal stories with regards to this the first is that i've genuinely witnessed this i was in second year of medical school it was my first obg posting and uh, obstetrics and gynecology and there's this man that walked in with his girlfriend and he's like she's now my fiance we've been together for bloody da years and you know give me a certificate that says that she's a virgin because i won't marry her otherwise so it legitimately does happen i have genuinely seen this with my own eyes and the second is that um there's a lot of there is genuinely a lot of media mixed media messaging and there's a lot of pressure on women's bodies to be a certain way there's a lot of value that is associated with a very tiny piece of tissue and the funny thing about that tiny piece of tissue is that not having a hymen may not necessarily mean that you're not a virgin and having a hymen may also not mean that you're not a virgin because there's a very good case record of a sex worker who had an intact hymen and you know she was a sex worker so of course there had been a lot of penis vagina interaction there but um the hymen is essentially a ring it's it's not it's not a dhakkan is how i always say it's not a dhakkan at the end of your water bottle because if it were a dhakkan you put your water bottle upside down there's no water that comes out right and if that were the case how would the period blood ever go out and there's a genuine legitimate medical condition called an imperforate hymen where the hymen does not have holes in it where the period blood keeps getting collected the girl presents with the age of i don't know 14 or 15 never had a period and she'll come to the emergency room in a lot of pain because all of this blood is now clogged up on the inside and we have to make an actual incision in them to let go of all of this 
so the hymen has holes in it. it it it's it's like a channi it's like a ring there's multiple ways and i completely get the fact that there's a lot of pressure but we want to break free from that because the hymen is not what we've been sold that it's like you know you don't need hymen reconstruction surgery you don't need a vaginal tightening surgery it's more more likely to make sex more painful painful for you than anything else um they can damage tissues the the extent of the clitoris was fully mapped out in 2005 that was 16 years ago so we didn't even understand female sexual response in terms of anatomy 16 years ago so all of these surgeries that have been happening they are botching up a lot of the clitoral tissue they are botching up a lot of the sensitive pleasurable tissue that's actually existing to make things better for you so you don't want to fall prey to these half baked surgeries essentially all of that said if it makes you feel better in some way and if it empowers you in some way sure go ahead and do it but it's not the right medical message these are not medically factual things you know talking about sorry uh, anvita were you going to follow up on that no, no. Um, go ahead literally from what you were saying um i i actually thought of something that again one of the questions that had come in that you know a lot of women don't feel orgasm when they have sex and they you know we know that that doesn't necessarily happen but there is also this huge amount of pressure to say that you're with somebody that you want to be and if you are this perfect woman then when the man penetrates you you will have this amazing orgasm and you will come together and there'll be this you know this is from all the films where everybody sort of falls back panting and sweating and you know so on <laughs> and um, there's a lot of women that don't feel pleasure or don't feel an orgasm when they're being penetrated and again this has been coming in about um, can they do something to enhance because they're actually worrying so they're wondering they can enhance the sensitivity in their genital area, in, in their vagina can they do something to enhance the sensitivity so that they feel the orgasm more and i i just i mean for me this question was particularly problematic i would love to actually go out and talk to these people personally to reassure them but i think you're the right person to do so um i think what's very important to remember is that for a lot of people we think the female equivalent of a penis is the vagina you know th- some german sexologists have gone on to call the vagina an inside out penis you know and what we always forget is that these are not the same tissues they're not derived from the same thing the female equivalent of a penis is the clitoris if you look at the embryological origin of both of them i start i'm an embryologist so i've studied this quite in depth they both look the same they kind of look like a small man with his head bent and like arms kind of like this and you know little feet sticking out um they derive from the same tissue the clitoris becomes erect in the same way that a penis does so it's kind of like the 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 question of asking how do i make my vagina more sensitive to you know sexual pleasure is kind of like asking a man coming up and asking how do i make my balls more sensitive to getting an orgasm you're not going to get i mean there's some people sure that do orgasms from you know scrotal stimulation but for the vast majority you're not going to have an orgasm from stroking your balls it's it's not going to happen <laughs> so there are certain stimulants you can get that can enhance your sexual experience largely but between 50 to 75% of women and this is a very well known fact in sort of people who do study sex um between up to 75% of people agree that they've never had a vaginal orgasm or vaginal orgasms don't work for them and that's because the vagina is not the organ that's meant to orgasm <laughs> you know it's the clitoris that's meant to orgasm which is where the the positions come into play because there's something called the coital alignment technique that i haven't read too much about there's one book that i've read uh on it that's a wonderful book i'd recommend it to everybody it's come as you are by emily nabowski wonderful book but there's something about the coital alignment technique there which basically suggests that how to have sex in a way that your clitoris is also stimulated which is where the positions come into play 
so you don't necessarily have to increase the sensitivity of your vagina you just have to include clitoral play in it mm. either before after during however that's up to you to orgasm i think that just it's so simply put thank you because whenever i discuss this from the point of view of what the kama sutra says somehow it it has a two pronged effect you know there is this one thing about it suddenly feels very exciting because it feels doable but it's also a book that was written 2000 years ago and it becomes part of mythology and so somewhere in the middle we get stuck in this um, twilight zone so yeah i think that's really well explained that this isn't the organ that's supposed to come so hence it's okay if you don't feel that sensitive or if you don't feel that you need to come from that there and also i think in a woman's body there is just so many other pleasure points i mean i know um most of us have so many points that we can actually stimulate for pleasure that i don't think we should be worrying if you can't have it in that one place but on that happy note tanya thank you so much for explaining so much of this to us i um i know that this uh, particular podcast has become much longer than our regular podcast aim to me uh, aim to be but i think that it's going to be particularly useful for everybody every vagina owner out there needs to know this and i have to say that we'd like you we would both like you to come back again and talk about vaginas in slightly older women so post menopause post childbirth etc because i know that there are such changes that take place both on the outside and on the inside mm-hmm. so let's do that as part 2 for sure <laughs> yeah so um, just in closing i think what um, i'd like to reiterate is uh, as tanaya was saying that vaginas are very very different vulvas are very different there is an automatic amount of pigmentation that happens you don't need to be worried about that because anything that has a fold to it is going to have more pigmentation and the odors are again very very natural please don't try and get all these different chemicals and products to try and perfume the area perfume the outside if you want as much as you want you know but not on the inside don't do shit don't wash it out and by and large understand that you need to respect your vagina it's this beautiful organ that can expand and do amazing things contract and come back to whatever you need it to be it doesn't need to follow anybody else's rules it's your vagina your rules there are a lot of different ways of finding pleasure in and around it don't put it through any more angst and stress than it needs to be and um i think that i just like to wish everybody well and stay well and healthy and you know if you've enjoyed the podcast please do like comment subscribe if you have any questions at all i am on info.seema.anand um, oh no that's not the whole thing is it it's info.seema.anand@gmail.com if you have any questions for anita to do with consultation or therapy she is on anita.madanbehel@gmail.com and if you have any questions for tanaya she is on drcutrus@gmail.com um it is still covid times as we've said things haven't become okay so please do stay careful stay well we will see you over here again very soon and we will come back with part 2 the older woman's vagina or the mature woman's vagina <laughs> but i want to say that because we have no platforms and we always have questions about our vagina even if you're not an older woman and you have a question send it in we're happy to do a part 3 so send in the questions about your vagina and do take take do take care of your vagina today and we'll ask the question again next time how is your vagina feeling today